OK, so you want to create a stocks and shares tracker in Microsoft Excel. In this video, we're going to learn about the stocks data type. And we're also going to learn about a function called stock history. OK, so this is an example of the type of tracker that we're going to create. Now, to start off with, you'll need the name of the funds or the individual stock that you want to track. So I've got an example list here. What you then do is select that list, go to the data tab on the ribbon and click on this stocks button. Now, most of the time it's going to pick out the exact stock or fund that you want to track. But for example, down here, I've only put Fidelity as the name of the fund. And obviously it's not going to know which Fidelity fund I want to track. So what it does over here is give some examples of Fidelity funds. We'll say I wanted to actually track this one. I'd click on select and it will complete the name for me. So then I'll widen this column. Now your next step would be to select all of those stocks or funds. And when you do so, you'll see this little button here, insert data. And if you click on it, you'll get example attributes that you can return about these funds or stocks. Now, if I look through this list, I could, for example, select change, and that'll give me the one day change in dollars. Now I could also show that change as a percentage change. And then obviously I'd need to put some headings in. Now I'm gonna reselect my funds and stock that I want to track. Now I'm not gonna go through every single one of these attributes, but let's pick price earnings ratio. Now you can see that not every item in this list has that information available. In fact, it's only the individual stock that do. The funds or the ETFs don't. So I'll give you another example where that is the case. I'm gonna look for expense ratio. And you can see that that's only available for the funds, not the individual stock. Now I'll put some headings in. So this is starting to look a little bit messy, but what we can do is look at the underlying formula that's been created here. So I can see that the formula refers to A2, the name of the fund, and then I have the attribute name in square brackets. Now, what I could have done instead of using this method, of getting this information into my sheet, is just write a formula. So for example, equals A2 dot, and then choose the attribute that I want to return. Now, one advantage of using this method is it's only going to show the attributes that relate to this item. So in this example, a mutual fund. So I can see that there's no price to earnings ratio option in this list. But over here, for example, I could return the expense ratio just by double clicking on that attribute there. Press enter and it returns the expense ratio. Now, I'm just gonna copy that back up. How do we get rid of these error messages? Well, very simply, I can just put this within the if error function. So if error has two arguments, value, that's returned by this formula here, and then value if error is what you want to return in place of the error. So I'm gonna say an empty text string, blank cell, close the bracket, press enter. Then if I copy that down, gets rid of the errors and I can do the same here. Now the other thing you might want to do is apply some conditional formatting. We're going to have up arrows and down arrows in the change and percentage change columns. So what I can do is select both of those columns, home, conditional formatting, icon sets, more rules. So the icon sets I want are these arrows. And I want a green arrow when the value is greater than zero. So I change the type to number. Value stays as zero and I want it greater than zero. If the price did stay the same, I'd want a yellow arrow. So I just put a zero in there. And then anything less than zero, we'll get a red arrow. Just change that to number and then I'll click on OK. Might need to widen these columns. OK, so that's basically how you use this stocks data type. What about the stock history function? 
So my first argument is stock. So let's use this Microsoft stock as our example. And then the second argument is start date. So what's the first date that you want to return stock history information for? So I'm going to say that that's 52 weeks prior to today's date. So I'm going to use the today function for that, minus 52 times 7, comma. Now the end date is non-mandatory, but we're going to say that we want to return stock data up to the current date. So I'll use the today function for that. Now, if I close the bracket and press enter, you can see that it's returned the closing price for this stock, Microsoft, for each of those days. Now, there are a few other arguments that we can use. The first of which is interval. So by default, it's gonna return daily prices, but I could return the price at the beginning of each month. So let's choose that option, press enter. Now I can return more than the closing price, and I can do that by using these property arguments. Now, first of all, we've got this headers argument. I do want to show header, so I'll say that's one, comma. Now, instead of just showing the date and closing price, what I can do is specify more columns. So I'm gonna start with date, comma. Then I'm gonna have closing price, comma. Then I'm gonna have high, so the highest price on a particular day, comma, the lowest price, comma, and then I could have volume. Now I'll change this back to interval of daily, so you can see this. And if I press enter, returns all of that information. Now what I actually want to do in this tracker is return the closing price at the beginning of each month and then create a little spark line chart within these cells. So we don't need any of these property arguments. Headers, we don't need. So I'll have that as zero. And the interval, we're gonna have as monthly. So if I press enter, that's what it's returning without the headers. Now, what I want to do is transpose this data so that these prices are in individual columns. I just use the transpose function for this. So if I move this up into position here, the problem we've got is, is that we're returning the date with the closing price. Now I do want to show the date, but I'm gonna to have to return that with a separate formula up here. I just want to show the closing prices for each of these items that I want to track. So to extract the second row of data and this spilled array of values, I can very simply use the index function. So my array is returned by this formula here. My row number is gonna be two because I want to return row two. And my column number I'm gonna leave as zero or I'm just not gonna use it. And if I do that, it's gonna return all of the values in row two. So if I close the bracket, press enter. Now at the moment, these prices actually relate to Microsoft. So what I need to do is move that range reference up. So then I can copy this down and I'm getting the prices for the other items in my list. Now to get the dates to appear at the top here, I can use this formula pretty much as it is. So I'm gonna copy it, paste it up here. And instead of returning row two, I need to return row one, which is where the dates are. So if I press enter, I then get the dates. Now I'm just gonna format these dates with the custom number format. So control one, custom, and my format's going to be MMM-YY. Click on okay. And now I've got the dates across the top. Now, if I wanted to show a little spark line chart, I could just insert a column there. So to get the spark line chart, I click into a cell in my new column. I go to the insert tab on the ribbon. In the Sparklines group, I click on this column button. Data range is gonna be all these closing prices. And location range is already specified. Click on OK. 
There's my sparkline chart and I can copy that down and I get it for the other items. Now, one additional thing I could do here is show the highest price in a different color. So to do that, I can use this marker color dropdown and go to high point and I'm just gonna use this orange color here. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.